Hey folks, today we're looking at one of my favourite wide field refractors. This is the William Optic Xenostar 61. Hi guys, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. Today we're taking a look at one of my favourite wide field telescopes, the William Optic Xenostar 61 Mark II. I'll be sharing some example images at the end of the video, so stick around for that. This will be the first in a series of videos that I'm planning to release over the coming months to show you the telescopes that I use during my imaging sessions here in the UK. But I want to hear about your equipment too, so let me know what scopes you use in the comments below. I'll give you a brief overview of their specs, why and how I use them, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But let's get straight to today's scope, the Xenostar 61. For full disclosure, this is my own Z61 that I paid for myself and all other components and accessories that I mentioned in this video are also my own, so this isn't a sponsored review. The Z61 is a small, portable, wide field refractor and I've had great fun with it over the past couple of years. It's great value for money in my opinion, not only because of the great optics, but it also sports some handy ergonomic designs that I really appreciate as an astrophotographer. In terms of specs, the Z61 is an apochromatic doublet with a high quality FPL 53 glass, giving me sharp, high resolution images of my targets. I've got the gold version here, but you can also get it in red or a cool space grey too. This scope has a focal length of 360mm, which means I can image large portions of the sky, which is great for bright nebulae and some larger galaxies too. It has a focal ratio of f5.9, meaning it's not the fastest nor the slowest of scopes, but if you're interested in speeding it up, William Optics also have a 08 times reducer, which brings the scope down to f4.72. I've just got the standard flattener, which I'll show you later in the video, so my version runs it as native 5.9. So let's get into the mechanics and design features of the Z61. The scope comes protected in this cool carrying case, which is heavily padded and has room for other accessories, so if you're travelling with this scope, you'll feel confident that it'll be well protected on long journeys. I just love how the scope is put together and the CNC machined aluminium components give the scope a premium feel. It just feels so solid and despite its size you can feel the weight and quality parts when you have the scope in your hands. It also includes a sleek vixen style dovetail which comes in a matching colour of your scope. There's also a sturdy handlebar above which can be used to mount a guide scope and camera or any other accessories you want to add. The focuser is a nice 2 inch dual speed rack and pinion focuser which is buttery smooth and it helps me nail focus every time. Speaking of focus, William Optics have also included a cool wee feature in the dust cap of this scope. If you unscrew the end of the cap, you'll find an integrated batten off mask, which is a popular method of focusing on bright stars using diffraction spikes. Many of the William Optics refractors have these integrated masks, and it's a nice addition for astrophotographers. The coarse knob of the focuser also has an integrated thermometer to help you track the rise in dips in temperature during your imaging sessions. Focus can sometimes be affected by sudden changes in temperature, so this is a helpful aid, located in a handy spot. The dew shield has a nice bit of tension on it which allows it to slide easily, but it also stays in place when needed. This is especially appreciated when I take my flat calibration frames at the end of an imaging session, and this dew shield has no problem holding the weight of my light panel. The Z61 is a really versatile scope when it comes to mounting options too. Its small size and low weight of just over 2 kilos means you have plenty of scope to add additional accessories and still be light enough to keep it as a portable setup. I've plopped the Z61 on both my Ioptron Skyguider Pro and my larger Skywatcher AZ EQ6 GT Pro mount and it's performed great in both, so it's nice to have some options here. Now let's talk about some recommended accessories to help streamline your imaging sessions with this Wii scope. I'll share links down below of all the components that I mentioned in this video, so you can check that out there for more information. If you want to use this scope for imaging, you'll really need to get a flattener or the associated flattener reducer for it. I've got the standard flattener and it works great with both DSLRs and dedicated astro cameras. I really like this flattener as it screws directly onto the scope, giving me great confidence that my astro gear won't come crashing down during an imaging session. If you've done any astro imaging before, you'll know that correct back focus is key to getting flat images and nice round stars. Back focus is a whole other topic, but if you want to see a video on it, let me know in the comments below. The William Optics flattener is great help here as it includes numbered guidelines in the flattener itself to make sure you're hitting the right amount of back focus. The William Optics website provides details on the correct amount of back focus you need when using this flattener with different cameras so I'll link it in the description below. Attaching your chosen camera is a cinch too. When imaging I use a DSLR and dedicated astro camera depending on the targets and sky conditions 
but the Z61 can easily handle both. When using a DSLR, you just need to attach the relevant adapter and then this screws directly onto the flattener. Again, I like this solid connection between the components here. With a dedicated Astro camera, I just add the relevant spacers to the camera and again screw this directly onto the flattener. When it comes to framing your targets and lining up your chosen camera, the flattener boasts a handy rotator too. This is a very nice touch considering the relatively low cost of this great scope. You just loosen the pin, rotate as you need, and then lock it back down. Simple. So if you're in the market for a small and highly portable scope with excellent optics and great value, then you really can't go wrong with the Z61. I highly recommend it. I've had no issues with mine at all, and I know I haven't really shared any negatives in this overview, but to be honest, I haven't really run into any over the two years I've been imaging with it. Speaking of imaging, I'm sure you want to see some actual pictures now, and I'm happy to share a small portion of the many images I've taken with this wonderful scope over the years. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you can join me in my next video. Best wishes from Scotland, and clear skies to you all.